Wow. Did you see him? Saul was chasing us. He was coming through this way. You see, that's exactly what was happening. David had 300 men, and he was on the run because Saul wanted him dead. I don't know if you remember how, how David was supposed to be the next king, and Saul was the king, right? And he wanted David dead, so David was on the run. But why would man such have such hatred in his heart? Because you see this, Saul had so much hatred because he had sin in his heart. His heart was full of it, right? And maybe in your life, and many other people, you don't want to go around seeing people dead, but you still lie, you still cheat, you still have anger and disobedience and all those things. And you can't just hide them. They're still there. you got to surrender them. you got to offer your heart to Jesus and say, Jesus, forgive me. Because you know what Jesus did? Or he wasn't just some man who came and did good. He was God who came in the flesh and sacrificed his heart. He totally gave his whole heart over to save us. And your, your plan, your, your heart to say, Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. I trust in you. But you know, see, that wasn't at all in Saul's heart. He had only had hatred and, and, and he wanted to see David dead. So he's chasing him down. And David, what he did, and his 300 men, they hid out in a cave, okay? And they're hiding in the deepest part of the cave. And guess what happened? Saul came into that cave. He was looking for a dark place, maybe a place to rest and to lay down. Well, David's men noticed Saul lying there and said, David, this is your chance. Take your sword. Kill him. The Lord has given you into his hands, into your hands today. Well, David took his sword. Went up to Saul. What do you think he did? You think he just uh, killed his enemy? No. It says he may have wanted to, but he cut off the corner of Saul's robe. And Saul had got up, left the cave. David came out to the entrance of the cave and saw Saul right there and yelled out to him and said, Saul, God has given you into my hands today and I have spared you. Well, Saul had a little bit of remorse, right, and wept and declared that David was the better man, but it didn't change him. We know, continuing reading in that passage, he continued to seek after David's life. But guys, I want to tell you this today. In your life, when you're having to make a decision about two things, right, or three things, or many things, and you feel, you feel one way is the right way. I feel I should do this, but I know God is saying this. As you're talking to people, as you're spending time reading God's word, you know, our feelings will lead us totally astray. If we just say, I'm going to follow my heart. Well, that's not right. We want to follow what God says is right and true. And as we're spending time with God, we're going to get to know his character. We're going to get to know God's heart. And we're going to desire, have the power and ability to do what God says is right. Because that time we're spending with him. And we may not always understand or anything that is happening, but I want you to know this from Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares, declares the Lord. For as, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. See, that's what we got to come into in life, you guys. There might be decisions with, with friends at school and kids who are mean and stuff like that. We feel, my i got to just beat them up and show them that... I, I can't be walked on, right? Like that. But you got to declare, God is king. That person who's doing that evil or that situation, God will take care of it. He is the one in control. You just have to declare, just like David did, God, I'm going to let this into your hands. I'm not going to take this action to my hands and try to solve this myself. I'm going to go to you, God, and say, God, I trust your plan. 